Hello, grade three students. This is a new science video and we are talking about heat. As I told you last time, heat moves from a place to another place and it makes some changes. But before we talk about the heat effect on objects, let's go for a quick reminder about sources of heat. What are examples of things that give that make heat energy. The first and the main one is the sun, which is the main source of heat on earth. The toaster, also we use it to heat uh, the toast. Um, the kettle to heat water. A candle is also a source of heat and the heater for sure. Those things um, change a kind of energy into heat energy. Like for example, in the sun, there are gases burning, okay? That's what we call a chemical energy. Chemical reactions happening in the sun, that is fire, something burning to make heat. So right here, it is the chemical energy changing into heat energy. To use a toaster, you'll need electricity. Without electricity, you cannot heat your toast. So it is the electric energy turning into heat energy. Same for the kettle. You will need electricity. Right here, the electric energy is converted into heat energy. The candle is an example of things that transform chemical energy into heat energy. As I told you, each time you see something burning, like in the case of wood fire, like in the case of the candle, um, a burning coal, burning uh, fuel, this is the chemical energy turning into heat energy. The heater shown in the last picture is an electric heater. So right here, the electric energy is converted into heat energy. So as you can notice, both chemical energy and electric energy can be converted into heat energy. But we still have another type of energies that can be turned into heat energy, which is the mechanical energy. As I told you, and as I explained in class, when you move things against each other, like when you rub your hands against each other, or you rub an eraser against a paper, you are making heat energy. So it is the mechanical energy um, converted into heat energy, okay? Three types on, of energies can be converted into heat energy. First, we have the chemical energy, we have the electric energy, and we have the mechanical energy. These three energies can be changed into heat energy. Those sources of heat give heat, they provide heat, and as you know, heat moves from a hot place into a cold place. Like when you use a heater, the heater is more hot than you. So heat energy moves from the heater to you. When you lay in the sun, the sun, which is the source of energy, is giving you the heat energy. So heat moves from the sun to you. Another example, you're sitting next to a fire, the fire right here is the source of heat energy. Heat energy moves from the fire to you. What about this? The girl is holding a cold bottle of juice. Which one or what is more hot in this case? Is it the bottle or the girl's hands? What do you think? the hands for sure the bottle is cold the hands are warmer more hot than the bottle of juice so heat energy moves right here from the hands to the bottle of juice how does this energy move and do all objects 
let heat move in the same way? No. There are some objects that, that let energy move fast. Those are called conductors of heat, while others do not let heat energy move fast in them. So we call them bad conductors of heat or insulators of heat. A um, spoon made of metal is um, a good conductor of heat. It lets heat move fast inside it. So when you place a metallic spoon in hot water, heat will move from the hot water into the spoon, and then the spoon will turn hot quickly. Does this happen when you use a spoon made of wood? So heat energy in here is moving from the hot water to the spoon. But since the spoon is a bad conductor of heat, it doesn't let heat move easily in it. So the spoon doesn't turn hot. Metals are good conductors of heat. What are examples of metals we know? Iron, yes. Silver, for sure. Gold, that's right. Those are examples of metals, and they are good conductors of heat. While others, like wood, plastic, papers, those are not conductors of heat. They are bad conductors, or we call them insulators. Okay, thermal insulators. To uh, talk about how heat moves from a place to another, we will make an experiment, okay? So let me show you. You'll need a glass bottle, a balloon, and a hot plate. And you, can do, you cannot do this by yourself, okay? Place the balloon on the opening of the bottle, and then place the bottle on the hot plate. Hot plate. First of all, is this bottle empty? Do you think that the bottle is empty? There is nothing, nothing, nothing inside it? No, the bottle has air inside it. Okay, it's not empty. It has some air inside it. Okay, let's continue. After a while, you will notice that something weird will happen. What did inflate the, the balloon? What happened right here? Why is the balloon now inflated? What changed? This is the effect of heat. Okay? We were heating. Let me show you. So the bottle placed on the plate right here, exactly. Inside the bottle, there is air, okay? And this, the hot plate is too hot, right? Heat energy is moving from the plate to the air inside the bottle. Heat energy is moving from a hot place, which is the hot plate right here. This is the hot plate plate into the air inside the bottle. How does this change the air, the air inside it? The air increases in size. It's like there are more air inside, okay? Or the air is increasing in volume. We say that the air expands. The air becomes, let's say, okay, so expanding means becoming or turning bigger, increasing in size or increasing in volume. So right here, when we heat the air, the air is hot inside the bottle, it increases, it becomes bigger, let's say, okay? And what, when it increases in size, when it expands, it inflates the balloon. Okay, we heated the air using a hot plate. When the air is heated, it expands. When the air is heated, is it expands. So gases like the air expand when they are heated. 
does heat affect gases only? Let's see the effect of heat on solids. We're going to do another experiment. Look at the ball and ring experiment. We have a ball. This ball can go in and out the ring, okay? What we will do now is to heat the ball. This ball is made of metal, it is solid. We will heat it for about three minutes, okay? We are heating the ball. The ball is now too hot. Let's try to put it in the ring again. It doesn't fit. The ball is now bigger, right? It doesn't go anymore inside the ring. What happened? This is the same thing. The heat affects solid. When we heat solids, they increase in size. What is the word we used? It's expand, okay? This is the solids expansion. Solids increase in size when they are heated, they become bigger. So it's the same conclusion. Both gases and solids become bigger or expand when they are heated. Tayyip, how do we um, turn back the ball into its original size? We can simply cool it, put the ball again under cold water. The ball will regain its original size. Let's try it right now. Ta-da! It fits again. The ball can go in and out the ring. Train rails, those are the rails. They, they are made of metals. Let me play the video first. Do you think that the rails bent because of thermal expansion? If yes, then you are absolutely correct. A railway track is made up of a number of rails joined to each other. These rails are usually made up of steel. Okay. So the train rails or any vehicle rails are made of metals. Steel is a kind of metal. When you heat steel, steel expands on heat. When you heat steel, it expands, it becomes larger. But what happens when you cool it? Contracts it? On cooling. it contracts, it when decreases the rails in size. one another without leaving any space for expansion, the rail when it is too hot in summer and there is no space between the rails, look what happens to the rails. Rails bend due to thermal expansion and the train goes off the rail. Okay, this will cause the, the train to derail. It falls down and lots of problems happen. So what do engineers do? What do people do? How did they solve this problem? Track. To avoid this, the rails are not joined together firmly. Instead, each rail is connected to the other in such a way that a small gap is left in between. Okay, so they left a space between the rails. This way, even if the it's too hot and the rails expand, they don't the stick These together. small gaps provide space for easy expansion of the rails. Okay, so this way, when they expand, Look at this. This does not happen. The problem is solved. How will you solve this problem? We have a road and we have a cylinder, okay? And we want to place the road in the cylinder, but the road is big and the cylinder is too tight. It, it doesn't fit. What will you do? You will need to turn the road smaller and the cylinder bigger. What will you do? To turn the road smaller, you will need to cool it, right? Because if you heat it, it will become bigger. So you will need to cool it and cool the road. And if you want to make the cylinder, this, I'm talking about this, bigger, you will need to heat it, right? So, heat the cylinder. 
So this one is the right answer. To solve this problem and so the road can fit the cylinder, you will need to cool the road and to heat the cylinder. Didn't we say that heat changes matter? Water is an example of matter. How does heat change water? When you place water in the freezer, it turns into ice. So here, liquid water changes into solid water. But when you place ice in the outside, in the room temperature, it melts. So you are turning solid water into liquid water, right? The last thing, let's, if you try to um, heat water, water will start boiling and then it will start to evaporate, turning into water vapor. So right here, the liquid water is turning into water vapor, okay? Again, liquid water, the water that we drink is water. Ice is water. Water vapor is water. The difference is that liquid water is liquid, but ice is solid. And water vapor is a gas. Water exists in three different states liquid, solid, and gas. And the first thing is in the, in the first picture, we freeze water. That's what we call freezing. In the second, the ice is melting. So this is melting. In the third, liquid water evaporated. This is evaporation. And this is all about today's lesson. Let's recap. Heat affects matter. Solids, liquids, and gases increase in size, in volume, in amount. When they are heated, they become bigger. They expand. This is the word. They expand. We're talking about expansion. They expand. Water exists in three different states. Ice water, liquid water, and gas water, okay? Ice, this is solid, this is liquid, and this is a gas. Water exists in three different states. Water changes, changes according to the change of heat. When you heat ice, it turns into water. This is melting. When you heat water, it evaporates. This is evaporation. But when you cool, and when you make the water lose heat energy, when you cool water, it freezes. This is freezing, okay? This is all for today's lesson. And thank you for watching. Um, take care and bye-bye.